All right, this is the second installment of material on psychological disorders. These are the learning objectives for this section. Uh, this looks like a lot, of course, um, but this is really organized by um, specific disorders. You'll need to know the major symptoms of each of them. Um, a lot of these are relatively familiar, so I think um, just, just knowing what the major symptoms are um, is, is relatively doable. And then there's a lot of information about each of these. In your textbook, I've tried to distill it down to these specific items under each of these um, disorders. So there's some additional material we'll cover in these slides, but it'll be just for your information. Um, so those will be marked with an FYI. So we'll start off with anxiety disorders. <clears throat> First is phobic disorders. This is excessive fear and avoidance of specific objects, activities, situations. Um, that's of course marked and persistent, something that really interferes with your life. Uh, specific phobias, those would be things like a fear of spiders, a fear of heights, fear of bridges, uh, fear of staircases. Uh, social phobia is fear of being publicly humiliated or embarrassed. So it could apply to multiple uh, situations, uh, but just kind of that, that social aspect. You need to know about um, preparedness theory. Um, this is that we have a predisposition to certain fears. It's, it's more likely to have a phobia of something that's actually threatening, like spiders or snakes, um, rather than bunnies or uh, unicorns. <laughs> um, and this, this is kind of a, you can see how this uh, contrasts with behaviorist views that, um, you know, a lot of this is due to conditioning, maybe um, previous experiences that you've had with um, spiders or, or um, you know, situations or objects but it's it's more likely that you're going to have that conditioned response to something that has some kind of threat, um, true threat associated with it. There can be neutral stimuli that can still, um, you can develop phobias for, but we're predisposed, we're more likely to have fears for certain things. Um, research suggests serotonin and dopamine abnormalities and amygdala hyperactivity for specific for phobic disorders. Remember the amygdala being a critical structure for the experience of fear. Panic disorder. Uh, this is when symptoms uh, that occur suddenly and with a sudden occurrence contribute to feelings of stark terror and panic attacks. Uh, sometimes this is due to just autonomic arousal, you know, the fight or flight response, uh, just activating in your body with an unknown cause, and then having your uh, mind interpret that as uh, a feeling of panic or fear, or terror. So this provides some support for the James Lange theory, if you remember that. Um, and there's it's, this suggests that individuals with panic disorder may interpret um, physiological signs of arousal differently. Um, and sometimes that there's, uh, that there's abnormalities in that system. Generalized anxiety disorder. Uh, this is characterized by chronic excessive worry. A uh, key here is that it's not focused on any particular threat. Uh, it's just a, a general feeling of anxiety and loss of control. Um, benzodiazepines are a class of drug that have been shown to be effective um, in treating um, generalized anxiety disorder. And this, even though it's you know the underlying causes are still the subject of research, this suggests that the GABA, the neurotransmitter GABA, um, does play a role. Um, benzodiazepines are GABA agonists, meaning they, they mimic um, that neurotransmitter. They're a drug that mimics that neurotransmitter. They, they function as the 
the counterfeit key that can open the lock. Um, this is a an image of a GABA receptor. This is a cartoon, but there are proteins embedded in this membrane, so this is zoomed in really far. And this is where GABA would bind, um, and this would this would be a channel that could open up. And benzodiazepines can bind in another site. They actually work by making this channel more likely to open when GABA binds, um, but enhancing the effect of, of the GABA neurotransmitter. Obsessive compulsive disorder is another anxiety disorder. Um, as the name suggests, this is hallmarked by obsessions and compulsions. You need to know uh, the, the, the distinction between those two. Obsessions are the intrusive thoughts, uh, like intrusive thoughts about contamination, things being contaminated, or things being out of order. And the ritualistic behaviors, the compulsions, um, are the things that are done to fend off those thoughts, like repeated hand washing or, um, uh, what's the word, <laughs> um, excessive organization and things like that. Um, just as an FYI, um, serotonin seems to play a role. Um, the caudate nucleus is an area deep in the brain, part of the basal ganglia that appears to be overactive. And um, drugs that increase serotonin seem to be able to help. Excuse me. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. Uh, this is hallmarked by arousal, unwanted thoughts and images. Um, uh, part of this diagnosis is that there has to be some trauma that has occurred, uh, which could be combat, uh, rape, uh, a natural disaster, things like that. And it's hallmarked by current unwanted thoughts of that and avoidance of things that call the traumatic event to mind. So um, a veteran who, whose trauma involved like bombs going off during combat may avoid um, firework shows or things, you know, um, situations where there could be loud noises that could um, serve as a cue to activate memories of that trauma. This is some interesting data using structural MRI to assess the uh, the volume of the hippocampus, uh, suggesting that lower hippocampal volume, as you can see here, appears to be a predisposing factor. There are some differences, so the pink and the blue, looking at that, there are some differences between um, veterans and twins. Um, veterans exposed to combat and twins who are not exposed to combat, uh, but um, the key here is that here, um, if the veteran had PTSD, both he or she and their twin had a smaller hippocampal volume, so suggesting that there's a, that's a genetic, um, yeah, genetics are um, in, in part explain that um, trait and that it's a predisposing factor for uh, developing PTSD. So not everybody who experiences a traumatic event is going a traumatic event is going to develop PTSD, but this suggests that there's a there's a diathesis um, associated um, that, that could be present in somebody a predisposition and then a stressful event is going to trigger it. Um, and at least one of those, components of the diathesis is a smaller hippocampus. Mood disorders. <clears throat> Major depressive disorder is the most common, um, most well-known, uh, characterized by a severely depressed mood, lasts two weeks or more. So this isn't just occasional, an occasional bad day, of course, but this is a, for a long stretch uh, accompanied by these other symptoms. And as we mentioned in the last lecture on the DSM, you know, there's a whole list of potential symptoms that could be present, and it's only meeting a certain number of those uh, criteria that qualifies you for the diagnosis. So there are, not everyone's MDD is the same. SSRIs, or selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, are a common treatment for depression. 
Uh, Prozac is a brand name of one of these um, SSRIs. The, the chemical name is uh, fluoxetine. Uh, these are often effective, um, not always though, and an interesting uh, finding is that they're, they're not effective until they've been used, usually for about two weeks. So even though they're immediately going to affect um, serotonin levels at a synapse, and they're, they're reuptake inhibitors, so they, these would be um, indirectly, they, they would function as a serotonin agonist, they would enhance the effect of serotonin by increasing the amount of serotonin that hangs around in a, in a synapse um, by blocking the reuptake, basically keeping it from being vacuumed up. However, um, serotonin can't be the whole story because it, it, even though that effect is happening immediately, you won't see symptom uh, effects on the symptoms um, for two weeks or more. So there's got to be something else going on, and this is not fully understood. Uh, this data here suggests also um, a stress, diathesis stress model, um, that that helps to explain um, risk for depression. Uh, alleles are copies of a gene. You have, for each gene, you're going to have two alleles, um, a paternal and a maternal one. And this shows that you know, the probability of having major depression um, increases um, across all of these genetic um, profiles, two long alleles, one short allele, or two short alleles, um, just two kind of genetic variants of a particular gene. Um, if you have different levels of maltreatment, it's going to increase, but it's, it's especially... Um, it especially uh, affects your risk if you have the two short alleles. Two long alleles, you can go through some really severe maltreatment and still your risk of depression is not a whole lot different. But if you have the two short alleles, then your risk is going to increase significantly. Um, also know about the cognitive model of depression, uh, just a way of uh, conceptualizing the, the thought processes that accompany it. Uh, biases towards negative cognitions, um, that things are bad um, because it's my fault and things will never change. Um, so just kind of a bias towards um, seeing things through dark glasses, if you will, um, that the, the world just appears um, more hopeless. Bipolar disorder, um, bipolar disorder, and um, this is contrasted with uh, MDD, which is sometimes called unipolar depression. Um, this is characterized by cycles of high mood and low mood. High mood being referred to as mania and low mood um, referred to as depression. Uh, this also um, has a genetic component that's apparent uh, there's, al there's also evidence of significant uh, epigenetic effects where it's identical twins, um, some have it, some don't. Um, even though their genes are the same, um, there appear to be some epigenetic uh, differences between those two uh, twins. So not just the genes, but the modifications to the DNA. Okay, and that's all for this one.